We are going to go now to um, Representative Dana Rohrbacher, who is uh, in Irvine, California. He is on the uh, subcommittee uh, for NASA. Representative Rohrbacher, we appreciate you joining us uh, at this difficult time. Your thoughts? Well, thank you very much. I uh, know that today uh, many Americans were shocked and surprised and are saddened, certainly. But, you know, the astronauts, they have always understood that this is a space flight is a tremendous risk. And, uh, I think many Americans uh, uh, fully didn't appreciate that risk, and they, uh, you know, NASA has done such a great job, and the astronauts do a great job. Our aerospace industry does a great job, and they made it look like there was uh, less risk than there is. And uh, uh, now we know that uh, this is not to be taken for granted. But I know that the astronauts and the other people who've lost their lives before, uh, and have risked their lives before would want us to pause for a moment and reflect upon it and correct any problems that there are, but they want us to make sure that we are continuing to move forward. America, along with the other good people of the world, uh, uh, we're going to lead the whole human race in, into space and because uh, there's so many good things that we can accomplish there. As we go forward, as the days become weeks and the weeks become months and we move on to the investigation phase, what do you want to see? What, do, uh, what, what has to come out of an investigation? Well, there's a number of, of things that we have to consider. And, and first and foremost, uh, anyone who made a bad decision, yes, they should be held accountable. Even if they didn't intentionally do something wrong, if it's a bad decision, they have to be held accountable. Uh, if there was a technological flaw, we have to come to grips with that. So I, I think the best way to do that, however, would be through an independent uh, panel of people, perhaps uh, led by someone like John Glenn, uh, who has the technical expertise, but plus the prestige and the time to focus totally on this issue. But the most important thing to come out of it isn't perhaps that. Uh, you know, the fault or, or who made a mistake, and because we're going to correct the mistakes and we're going to hold people accountable. But we've got to know that space policy has got to come off of the back burner. Space policy has been uh, something that, uh, well, for the last 10 years, has been uh, something that hasn't been given the attention it deserves, considering the fact that there's so much potential of what can be done. And, uh, uh, right now, we're, we're, we are reliant on an ancient fleet, a fleet of shuttles that, and Columbia was the oldest one of them, that were designed 35 and 40 years ago. And uh, that's, that's not fair to our astronauts, and it's something that uh, if we have the right kind of attention, we could actually propel humankind into space and do great things there for all of us. So in a sense, rather than slowing down the space program, you would hope that, if anything, this event focuses greater attention on it and propels the space program uh, in, into the next century? Well, we are right now in the last century in terms of America's space program. As I say, the shuttle technology is something that was uh, new back in the late 60s and early 70s. So, uh, but from especially in the last 10 years, uh, the, the leaders have had other, uh, other things that concern them. To be fair to President Bush, since 9-11, we had a very serious national security uh, challenge that has taken up his time and effort. But we should now, as a people, decide that we are going to commit ourselves to utilizing space. And we, to do that, we've got to develop the technologies that will permit us new transportation systems. For example, the space shuttle engine is exactly the same kind of engine that they had uh, 35 years ago when the shuttle was first designed. We should be developing new propulsion systems. We should right. be bringing down the cost of getting into space and then committing ourselves to using space for the benefit of all humankind. Representative Rohrbacher, we appreciate you joining us uh, this evening. A very difficult day for, for all of us. Appreciate your, uh, your thoughts at this time. Thanks very much. I want to uh, just remind our viewers that in just a few moments at 8 o'clock, uh, we have a special edition. Uh, Wolf Blitzer, uh, Judy Woodruff, uh, uh, Miles O'Brien, um, a, a lot of CNN uh, people here have been working all day on this. Hope you join us for that. That just starts in about, uh, about four minutes from now. I also want to show you a little bit about how the seven astronauts aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia woke up today, what they heard on this, the last day of their lives.
morning to the red team. That was Scotland the Brave for Laurel. Well, good morning, Houston. We're uh, getting ready for a big day up here. Had a great time on orbit and really excited to come back home. Hearing that song reminds me of all the different places down on Earth and all the friends and family that I have all over the world. Thanks, and uh, it's been great working with you and all the other folks. The voice of Laura Clark, age 41, one of the seven brave astronauts aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia who died today. I'm reminded of what Ronald Reagan said in 1986 after the Challenger disaster. He said, the future does not belong to the faint-hearted, it belongs to the brave. And brave these seven were. I'm Anderson Cooper, that's it for me. Stay tuned uh, in about one minute. Special report from CNN.